We're back with part two of Jedi's course and this, this block of instruction focuses mainly on grip. So if you missed the first part, you can go watch the video up here and that's more of mitigating recoil with structure, not strength. So it's a great episode, go check that out. And then this was the next iteration of that, which was focusing on grip. And for me, this was the part that I was looking forward to the most because it's what I've struggled with the most. Like I was able to, to shoot okay, but I never felt confident behind the gun. I never felt like my grip was where it needed to be. And one of the things that I struggle with personally is because I have you know, slightly smaller hands than a lot of guys in the industry, especially a lot of instructors who have like really big meaty hands. It's, it's been tough because what works for them doesn't necessarily work for me. And the way they tell you to grip doesn't necessarily work for me. So I was try to, trying to find what worked for me and what didn't. And uh, I found a lot of ways to find out what didn't work. But coming into this, I was really excited to see because I'd watched some of Jedi's videos online and I kind of thought I knew, but I'll explain at the end. But um, th this is what, is what I wanted to learn the most because I felt like this is what was gonna help me the most. And uh, I will let you guys know like my update after this, but I'll let you watch Jedi's instruction and then uh, we'll touch base and see how that's helped me since then. Take what you want, throw it at the after class, throw what you don't want away. But if you throw it away, base it, base it on two, the only two metrics that matter, which are speed and accuracy, right? Your feelings are not a metric, okay? So here's my grip. Everybody see how high my support hand is, right? There's no pressure in my thumbs. My thumb is touching the slide, but it's not pushing in. There's no pressure here. There's no pressure in my firing hand, so my trigger finger can, can actuate easily. The pressure is in the drumstick of my palm and my pinky, okay? When I do this, I lock it in by pushing up into the trigger guard. The pressure is on in my drumstick, even with almost on top of the bore axis, locking in with my pinky so it's below the bore axis, and my palms are together in the back sealing that up so recoil and pulse cannot escape. So I'm above, below, and behind the bore axis, making my gun into one reciprocating mass. If you don't do that, then your gun goes from a reciprocating mass into a seesaw. Your firing hand thumb does nothing but push your support hand down, okay? Final thing, in order to show you the proper grip pressures and where I want your hands to line up and where I want you to push, I will be drawing on your hands with a Sharpie. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Don't let me push you down. Yeah. All right, Jim, got that. Don't let me push you up. Got it? Yeah. Okay, so now let's switch this up here, okay. back, and here. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. Middle on middle, but thumb up, thumb up. Thumb up. Thumb okay. up. Got okay. it? Here. Relax this. Pressure here, pressure here. Okay. Squeeze, relax. We're pushing up into the trigger guard and up and back to the one o'clock. For you, the one o'clock is towards your hammer. Okay. Okay. Again, matching up that pinky line to the top of the CMC to the bottom of the CMC, okay? okay. okay. We're pushing up, turning your index finger into a resting bench, up and back to the one o'clock, keep your palms together under recoil. Okay. Got it? So push yep. up in that trigger guard, don't yep. let me push you down. <laughs> don't let me push you up. Good. There you go. Up. My grip is not opinion, it's science. You get above the bore axis, below the bore axis and behind it and trap it in, it becomes a reciprocating mass. The only time it doesn't work is when you take my Kung Fu and you mix it with your Kung Fu to negate it all out and there's no Kung Fu. You get Krav Maga. <laughs> right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the brain cycles out of it, right? So that you can't mix in any of your Kung Fu. Okay. So actually Jeff, we're going to do you and we're going to do you. Okay. So Jeff, you come here first. All right. So I want you to show me what you think my grip looks like. One hundred percent, not my grip. Okay. So cool. First of all, stand up straight, head up. Okay, cool. See that gap. See how your thumbs are forward. Relax here. Bring this back up. Okay, relax this, squeeze, push up and slightly back. Got it? Cool. Give me four. Go. Uh-huh. Full strap. Uh -huh. So here's the thing. Why did that happen? Okay. Well, first of all, I told you why it happened. They took their kung fu and mixed it with my kung fu, right? But here's the thing, because I'm confident in my thing, I've seen a thousand times, that's why I come up. I just come up with the brain cycles, so they come up, and then the gun starts shooting flat. Okay? Um, I actually don't care what they say. I look at the slide. The slide tells the story, right? Your gun doesn't have to shoot perfectly flat as long as you're following the sights, but a flatter gun usually is easier to track 
that one that bounces like a seesaw, okay? Um, funny thing, right? So I was teaching in uh, San Antonio in Pleasanton, right? And I had a husband and a wife in my class. And uh, one of the guys says, yeah, it didn't work. So I come up to him, right? He had a beautiful CZ Shadow 2 Orange Sport. I got Cajun works is brilliant, okay? He gets up after I do him, and it's literally, tuk, 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 right? He gets done shooting, his wife starts laughing like we did to VP over there, right? And he goes, why are you laughing, woman? Because like, that's the flash I've ever seen your gun shoot. It's like, that's great, because I didn't see shit. And I'm like, you didn't see anything. Hey man, do me a favor, get your gun back out. So he goes up, what do you see? Nothing. Turn your head to the right for me. Oh shit, there's the dot. <laughs> Cross-eyed dominant, didn't even know. Because when he saw the irons, he didn't give a shit what he saw. He didn't see anything, right? Didn't even know it. So the answer's in the slide, right? Now guys, I make that part of it and I ask you that because it always happens almost every single class, okay? I expect that in the class, right? Uh, there are three stages to the learning process. The first one is you need to make the philosophical jump, right? That maybe the kit and the technique you're using might be better than the one you did before. If you don't do that, you'll never make that jump, right? But because they made the philosophical jump, they started doing it immediately, right? If you don't do that, it'll never get anywhere, okay? Then we gotta do the reps to match the physical with the conscious technique, right? Then once we get that, then we have a chance to burn it in, into the subconscious. Here's the problem, what happened with those two, right? I'm not stacking skills, I'm pushing some old shit out. And that old shit that's there, doesn't want to leave. So there's a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Expect that in your own performance, okay? But if we follow the process and not the result, eventually the new stuff takes hold. There is Jedi's grip. Now I'm gonna tell you up front, even watching this video, you're not gonna get the full understanding or experience of what his grip is like until he has hands on until he's there putting your hands on the gun where he wants them, drawing the lines and then you getting in the reps and then him and AJ coming along and going, nope, you're doing it wrong. Move this way, do this this way. And being able to understand the little things, the nuances that he coaches you through and talks you through. So I would, again, highly recommend, even if you're watching this, it's just gonna familiarize you with it. It's gonna give you somewhat of an understanding, but you won't get the full breath of it until you're in a course. So stop now, go sign up for a course. Uh, but but it's helped me in tremendously since then. I mean, it helped me in the class. You can see it in the recoil in that last video. It has helped a ton as far as like the gun tracking. I see my dot better. Uh, my draws are more consistent. There's still a lot of inefficiencies I have to work on that I'm working through. But as far as grip goes, the recoil is so much better the way the dot comes and sits back at zero. So like once I see my dot, I know it's coming back there. It's predictable. I know it's going to come back there, allowing me to shoot faster and more accurate. Um, I've shot my fastest, since the class, I've shot my fastest uh, draw. So like I've gone sub second consistently uh, and as fast as like an 88, which is quick for me running from an ALS with a thumb safety. I know there's guys out there that are way faster, but one week out from the class or two weeks out from the class, that's I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. I'm continuing to work on that. It is taking time to ingrain it, to learn it, because you've done something one way for so long that you have to do it a different way. And it's 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 slowly coming around, but I'm confident in it. I'm confident in where that I'm on the right path. And that's the most exciting thing for me, because now it's just a matter of put, getting in the reps, putting in the time to get better, to get faster. And um, yeah, it's it's been a huge help for me, a game changer as far as recoil goes and just putting the gun where I want it to be. So I'm excited to continue to work through it. Um, and, and I will say a thousand percent what he said in the video, if you mix what you did in the past with what he teaches, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna get the results that he, he shows you. If you do what he says and you give it time, you'll get the results. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now is just like putting in the time to get the results. So hopefully that's helpful for some of you guys. Um, some of you may be able to pick up some of this. Maybe some of you who have been to the class, it will serve as a refresher for you. Um, but there's a lot of great content coming out from this class. I mean, this is just scratching the surface. And again, this is what I put out isn't going to be the, you know, everything in the class because he's an instructor, right? So if you want that, go pay for the class. Uh, but, but again, thanks to AJ and Scott for letting me come out. Make sure you go follow Modern Samurai. I'll link him down below. I'll link AJ as well. If you guys have any questions or if there's something that you want to know more about, leave it in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, cry, chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. No, I start over. Okay. Whew, my heart's pounding.
that bite my tongue? Okay, I'm good with that.